So um, that, uh, that recording is now happening and uh, I'll get on with introductions. So without further ado, um, let me make sure that I'm sharing my screen and we'll uh, start with introductions. So uh, my name is Sam Strong. I lead Kiris on the West Coast. Uh, Kiris is a, a global data analytics consultancy firm and a gold partner of Tableau. Uh, I've been working with uh, Tableau and the team here for uh, quite a few years now, um, over probably about seven years or so, and uh, been with Kiris uh, working in the BI space for, uh, for quite a while as well. We do a lot of work with projects, um, both in marketing and digital media, um, and uh, also in a few other areas as well. So uh, really excited to have so many people on the, on the webinar today. Joining me from the team here, um, we have uh, Mayan, who's our VP of Data Intelligence. Uh, Mayan, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Sam. Hello, everyone, nice to meet you. Um, I lead our data intelligence delivery team here at Curious US. Uh, my background is primarily in data warehousing, data engineering, and I've been in the data space for about 10 years now. Uh, very excited uh, for this webinar today. Thank you. Thanks, Mayan. Um, and then also rounding out the, the Curious team before I introduce the Tableau side, we also have Eric Moore, who's one of our solution engineers. Um, Eric? Hey, thanks, Sam. Um, thanks, everyone. I'm really excited to uh, be a part of the webinar today. Um, yeah, my, my background is in uh, data visualization. I've been working with uh, Tableau uh, on the client side and uh, on the pre-sale side as well uh, for about four years now. Um, so I have a lot of experience um, with full stack of Tableau and um, excited to uh, excited to get started today. I'm glad to meet everyone. Awesome, fantastic. Um, and then on the Tableau side, we have Brittany, uh, the regional VP um, on the West SMB team. Uh, Brittany, do you want to uh, give, a, give an introduction? Sure. Hi, everyone. Brittany Freiboth. I've been at Tableau for about five years now in several different capacities. In fact, hello uh, to some of my former customers, as I used to sell into uh, the Western region. Um, I was over in the D.C. office working with our New York team, which is where I met Sam. And I've been working with the Kiris team for uh, just over three years now. I'm really excited to be partnering with them. They are a fantastic partner, um, an extension of Tableau sales team and Tableau in general. Um, great people to work with um, and just really excited to be working with our SMB team as well um, because it, it just to me it is more impactful to work with companies that are smaller that are um, really the the mom-and-pop shops or startups that are really trying to make something of themselves and make some you know the world in a, a better place so I'm really excited uh, if you guys want to connect with me via LinkedIn Feel free to uh, just type my name in. I am the one and only in the world since my name is very weirdly spelled. Um, so please do connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to uh, chat or connect at any time. Um, and I also like to share lots of content around data and Tableau in general. So um, thanks so much for joining us today and I hope you uh, learn a lot. Awesome, fantastic. Um, well, with, uh, without delay, then let's jump into the, uh, the agenda for today. So I'm um, going to go through uh, just a very quick introduction uh, as, as we've done and, and just a little bit more info on, on the background of Kiris and, and what we do. Um, we're then really gonna jump into, into the kind of main topic of today, uh, talking a little bit about uh, e-commerce business goals and some of the common challenges that we see with our customers um, in the e-commerce and, and digital marketing space. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the technologies that we see as, as, as a really good technology stack for being able to bring data together, store it, and then visualize it um, in this space and, and run through kind of the, uh, some of the core concepts involved in those technologies. We're then going to go into some demos um, and actually see some some live demos, pulling some some data in, um, looking at uh, looking at some some data and tables, and then actually uh, looking at Tableau, uh, jumping in some some dashboards and uh, showing how easy Tableau is to be able to 
bring data in and, and build out dashboards as well. Um, and then finally, we're going to round it out with some Q&A. Uh, so be thinking about questions as you go along. Feel free to put questions in the chat as well. Uh, we'll look through that when we go through the, the Q&A at the end there. So um, feel free to, uh, to, to write those down and, and have some prepared for us at the end so that we can, uh, we can make sure that we answer all of those. So, um, a bit of background. Kiris, we're a, we're a global uh, data analytics consulting firm. We have about 3,000 people worldwide um, and operate in, in uh, 18 countries around the world. Uh, we have a huge amount of experience of helping organizations with building out data platforms, um, bringing data in from lots of different sources, uh, building out data warehouses, uh, both you know, previously on-prem on and now these days more and more in the cloud. We have a lot of experience of also helping organizations with their strategy around data um, and putting in place proper data governance um, and, and uh, strategy processes uh, for roadmaps. Um, and we have a, a huge amount of experience with Tableau. Um, we've, we've done a, a lot of different Tableau projects um, with, with many different industries and many different types of clients. So um, yeah, really excited to be able to, to share some of our expertise on the call today. In today's webinar, um, we're really going to focus on you know, the, the e-commerce space. And for us, e-commerce is a really interesting, interesting business. Um, we work in, in a lot of industries, uh, but we see that there are some really interesting uh, specific challenges that face e-commerce companies and also companies that are use, doing a lot of different marketing um, using different types of mediums, particularly digital marketing, um, but also more traditional marketing styles. Some of the common business goals that we see that you know, really all sorts of companies in this space are trying to do um, is you know, that they want to they want to be able to acquire more customers and they want to do it in the most cost efficient way as possible. So they want to be able to minimize their customer acquisition cost. Um, we also see that the customer that they want to be able to maximize that customer life lifetime value. So you know, this might be that if they have customers that um, you know, have bought something in the past, they want to be able to uh, market products to them which are specifically tailored to things that they might be likely to buy in the future so that they can increase the, the amount of spend that that particular customer is making through their platform or, or in their products. Um, and so they want to be able to find more and better ways of doing this. They want to be able to optimize overall their, their marketing ROI. Um, so you know, this might not just necessarily be through specific campaigns, but they might be looking at their, you know, their entire kind of marketing department as a whole and thinking about how do we um, you know, optimize our, our use of spend to, to be able to grow our business. And then finally, one of the big business goals that we see is that they want to be able to help match supply with demand, um, particularly in the when there are you know, physical, uh, when we're actually retailing of physical um, types of products, like uh, in the example that we're going to talk about today. Um, we we see that you know, there might be various different uh, different sizes um, or different SKUs uh, that make up the product range. And so, yeah, if you're a customer and you want to buy a, a new pair of of socks, as as we'll be talking about in a little bit, um, and you're a size large, and you you, know, you get an advert and you click on it and you go to the website and they only have size small in stock, then that's probably not a particularly effective way of marketing. And so we want to be able to use data to be able to market more effectively um, in the ways that we do that. So just to put a bit of context in, in today, um, we've created a, a, a fake uh, e-commerce shop um, called Data Socks. And we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the challenges that, um, that we see. Uh, this is a, a e-commerce shop that, that we built out on uh, using Shopify. And um, yeah, the, the core products are really socks focused around data and analytics, and of course, a, a nice data hat there as well. So we'll be uh, using this as a, a sort of an example as, as we go through the um, more of the technical parts later today. Thinking about some of the data challenges that organizations face, um, you know, first and foremost, we see that uh, you know, 
data is in multiple systems. People uh, you know, have to get data from Shopify, from their different advertising uh, campaign systems, maybe you know, Facebook ads or Google Analytics. Um, maybe they also have some sort of internal stock keeping system or ERP system. And so, uh, and then accounting systems as well. And so you know, we see that data is often in multiple different systems, multiple different databases, um, maybe accessible through APIs. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes it's also stored in, in Excels or flat files that maybe uh, organizations receive from their partners or from their um, advertising companies. And so one of the big challenges we see is that you know, there, there is a lot of data out there, um, but it's stored in lots of different ways and in lots of different shapes. Um, we also see that there can be too much data for analysis in Excel. I'm sure lots of people are very familiar with opening a, a huge Excel file and waiting for, for about 10 minutes and then finding that their computer really doesn't do much and, and everything's kind of crashed. Um, Excel really doesn't manage uh, large quantities of data well at all. And so we really want to be able to do things that are scalable um, and scale as, a, as our business scales. And so think about how we can do this and, and provide um, you know, really valuable insights without crashing Excel and having lots of manual processes is a really important part of our, our kind of considerations. Manual processes in general um, are, you know, are gonna take up time. Time is money. If we have an analyst who's spending a lot of time downloading, um, you know, downloading some extracts from various different systems and then blending them um, and it's taking time, uh, that is essentially costing us money. And so we want to automate as many of those types of manual processes as possible. And then finally, we also see that one of the big challenges is that insights aren't actionable in real time. By real time, I don't necessarily mean you know, low latency sub second uh, types of things, although there are some scenarios where that could be relevant. Uh, but often, if there's a, an, a campaign that someone's running um, and they're running it, let's say, you know, through LinkedIn or Facebook ads, they want to be able to understand how that campaign performed for you know, the previous day or how that campaign is tracking. And if it's not doing well, they want to be able to make a change. Now, if the process for actually analyzing that data um, and comparing it against other campaigns that are going on in different platforms is a manual process and requires some sort of you know, manual extract and blending, then that's probably going to be something that is going to take quite a while and actually might mean that they miss out on, on potential opportunities to refocus marketing spend in areas that are more appropriate. So we want things to be fairly fast. So let's think about our data architecture. When we're choosing a, a data architecture, um, it's really important that we consider certain types of questions. Firstly, what are the data sources? You know, there might be APIs like Shopify, and Facebook, and Salesforce, and Google Analytics, um, databases or ESPs, flat files. Um, and so you know, we want to consider what our data sources are. We want to consider how regularly those data sources are changing. Are we using um, you know, a bunch of different influencers that uh, you know, are all providing us with um, different, uh, different information about the performance of their, uh, their ads um, on a certain basis? And, and you know, do we want to put that into our production system? Generally, what we're gonna think about is the data sources that aren't changing that regularly are the ones that we're gonna build out first in a more production way, and then the more agile data sources we can deal with in a, a more ad hoc sort of agile way as well. How does the data link together? So a big question for lots of marketing teams is around, uh, is around attribution. For us, um, attribution is, uh, is a fairly complex topic. It could be you know, what's the last uh, advert that a customer saw before they bought a product. It could be what was the first advert that they saw. It could be some sort of blended model that is you know, between each advert that they've seen throughout a certain period of time. And so being able to think about attribution, um, we want to be able to do some fairly complex logic there. It might also be that we can actually do attribution in a way that allows us to be able to um, understand you know, what the source of leads is if it's outside of maybe the digital means. So having sort of um, you know, promo codes which are uh, relevant to um, you know, something that was an, a radio or a TV ad or an influencer um, can be really useful to be able to link that together. We then also want to think about how regularly does the data update? Um, and so again, yeah, if it's updating very regularly, we probably want to automate that process as much as possible. 
uh, how do we store our historical data? If we have CRM data, we probably want to store historical snapshots so that we can see how a lead is converting from a lead to an opportunity to a, a sale um, and various stages in between so that we can really understand you know, how we're able to accelerate that time from a lead through to that, that sale. And then we want to understand who the user is gonna be of the actual dashboards or visualizations that we're creating of this data platform. Um, are we creating exec users who are gonna be looking at this for the first time and um, you know, really just want to see stuff from a high level? Or are we going to have users who are um, you know, really kind of doing deep down analysis into a particular campaign? We're gonna probably want to think about a slightly different way of working for both of those types of users. And then finally, um, it's always really important to link this back to the business. So what's, you know, what's your revenue? What's your marketing spend? Um, does it make sense to, to go with you know, the full kind of um, end-to-end -end solution? Or do we want to do something that's a little bit simpler um, because you know, maybe our spend doesn't really justify it? If I'm only spending $100 on you know, my marketing campaign, then chances are that you know, I, I, I might want to analyze that data, but if that's my total marketing spend, then it's probably not that much point in, in spending a huge amount of time analyzing the, the data around it. And so we want to think about kind of you know, where we draw the line in terms of linking things into the greater platform. So with that being said, let's jump into the technology. Why Tableau? Um, now, many of you on the call might have seen a seen a, a demo of Tableau in the past. Maybe you've used it at a previous company. Uh, maybe you're a current user. For us, um, as a consultancy firm at Kiris, we have a lot of experience using many different technologies. Um, but Tableau really is our go-to technology when it comes to data visualization, um, and particularly in these types of scenarios. A few reasons. Firstly, um, Tableau has the option to be a, a server install, but it also has Tableau Online, which is a cloud platform. Um, this is fantastic for smaller organizations because it means that they can get set up with Tableau without the need for a heavy you know, IT department or setting up their own server um, or lots of administration. And so this is really important when you're considering your platform. You know, you, probably if you don't have the resources internally, you probably don't want a platform that's gonna require a lot of administration and upkeep. Um, we love that Tableau is, is incredibly user-friendly. Uh, when you're thinking about you know, building out dashboards, there really isn't a tool on the market that's anywhere near as easy to be able to build out stunning dashboards um, as Tableau is. And so that's why we really enjoy using it on, on projects. Tableau has an incredible community of customers and consulting partners like Kiris. Um, there's a, a huge amount of support for people who are just getting started. And of course, you know, if you want some more professional support, um, that's really where an organization like ours fits in to be able to help you with building out some of your first dashboards. Um, it has the option to be able to connect directly to uh, the databases, um, but also do extracts. This is really valuable when you're considering um, both large volumes of data um, and how to optimize performance, but also when you're considering um, using multiple data sources and it might be that you, know, you want to have one that's updating on a very frequent basis. And so a live data connection to that data source could be really useful. Um, few final things, Tableau is highly customizable um, and can be embedded into web portals and other types of um, areas. So we actually see quite a few of our clients, um, our marketing agencies, and they embed Tableau into their web portals and then share it, share the dashboards with their customers so their customers can log on and see how the performance of their campaigns is going. Um, you know, this is a really valuable capability and, and Tableau is very strong in these areas. And then finally, you know, what's really important when we're talking data is we want something that has proper levels of, of enterprise security. Tableau is a product that's used you know, in, in all walks, uh, you know, in things like healthcare, in government. Um, we've used it in, in tier one investment banks. And, and so it has real sort of enterprise level security features that make it very safe for being able to, um, to use as a tool for storing and sharing data. So at this point, to talk a little bit about River and Snowflake, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Mayan. Thank you, Sam. 
So um, yeah, the next technology that we are going to talk about today is Reverie, um, which we are recommending as well for these types of solutions. So Reverie is a cloud-based integration tool that allows you to integrate data into an in-house data platform like the one that we're talking about today. Reverie has a few unique capabilities that we find are very suitable for these types of solution. So we're gonna highlight a few of them um, that we think are, are really most relevant. So it's a cloud-based platform, which makes it very scalable, um, but it also makes it very easy to start small, depending on what your use case is. It's very easy and simple to set up. Um, it's a server, serverless application. It doesn't require any installation. So you're really up and running within minutes. Reverie also has a lot of native connectors to data sources, which makes it especially ideal for when you wanna pull data from external applications, such as website traffic, uh, marketing platform, uh, you know, things like Shopify, um, so that part is super easy to configure. It does not require any coding, uh, which is sometimes a, a challenge when you have so many external applications and data that you want to pull data from. And lastly, Reverie also allows you to transform and manipulate the data coming from all of those different data sources. So you can combine uh, information coming from sales platform and marketing platform and inventory all to combine to allow to do some uh, more advanced calculations or models such as attribution models and more. So together, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, on one hand, you can easily connect to all of those external data sources, but on one hand, it's very customizable and allows you to uh, build some, some more advanced data models and calculations. So the Third and last technology that we're going to talk about today is Snowflake. And um, Snowflake is a cloud da data platform. And we uh, recommend to have Snowflake as part of, of the solution that we're talking about today to kind of store, store the data and create some sort of data warehouse layers. Um, for companies that are currently using other data platforms, such as other cloud databases and things like that, the entire solution that we're talking about today can also work with that as the entire solution is very modular. So both Reverie and Tableau can work with other platforms as well. Um, but Snowflake specifically has a, lot of cap has a lot of advantages and unique capabilities. There's a lot to say about Snowflake, but for the purposes of today's webinar, we won't spend too much time on Snowflake. The one thing I will point out is that um, similar to the other two technologies that we've that we've already talked about, Snowflake is also a cloud and SaaS platform, which makes it very scalable, very easy to set up, and also very efficient to work with. Um, I'll be happy to answer any specific questions about Snowflake later on when we get to the Q and A. Um, so this architecture slide is kind of how everything eventually fit toge fits together, all the different components that we've talked about. So what you're seeing here is kind of a typical setup of an architecture or a data flow that would exist in, in a data platform, such as the one that we're talking about today. So going from left to right, on the left side, you can see a few examples of all of the different data sources and application that would be relevant to pull data from. You can see online marketing data, CRM data, transactional data, and there's probably some other uh, maybe internal data sets like Sam mentioned earlier. So all of those would be integrated into Snowflake using Reverie, and we'll demonstrate how that works in the demo. And um, in Snowflake itself or, the, or any other cloud database that you would be using, we typically recommend to have two main layers. So the first layer is kind of the raw data layer, which we use to land the data as is. And the second layer is a data warehouse layer, which we use to model the data um, a bit differently in a way that's tailored for consumption and for analysis in Tableau. And we'll show what that looks like. On the right side here, you can see the consumption layer, which can serve different types of end users with dashboards or self-service analysis using, of course, Tableau. So with that, we'll move on to the demo portion of today's uh, presentation. So we will cover two, 
we will uh, cover three things in our demo. We'll start off with Rivery. We'll move on um, to just a quick peek in Snowflake, and then we'll move on to Tableau to see all of the magic that we can do there. So I will share my screen now. Hopefully everyone can see this. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're going to start today's demo with Rivery, and we'll use um, Rivery as our data integration tool to walk through a couple of examples of, of uh, how easy it is to, to pull data from, from different data sources. So as I mentioned, um, Rivery is a cloud, is a SaaS platform. Um, this is the web user interface that is used to configure everything, and there's no installation or anything like that. So just a very quick tour of the menu here and what we're seeing. So we're, right now we're seeing the dashboard, which is just kind of an overview of all the different um, pipelines that we have configured in, in our demo environment. There's another screen here um, that's a bit more detailed activity screen that is used for kind of ongoing monitoring of, of um, the different jobs that are scheduled. And uh, this next portion, this next area of rivers, this is really where um, most, of the, most of the work or the configuration is done. This is where we define our rivers. So rivers in uh, rivery are just uh, the terminology used for uh, pipelines or jobs, basically just um, a sequence of step, steps that is used to pull data from point A to point B and apply some transformation on it. So we're gonna walk through two rivers together today. The first one is going to be to pull data from Google Analytics into Snowflake. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna open this uh, river that I have pre-created uh, pre before this demo. So this river is going to be uh, to pull data from Google Analytics specifically. And as you can see here on the top, there are three main steps that um, are required and we're gonna walk through them. So the first step is defining the source, and uh, this will require to define the, the actual source that we're connecting to. In this case, like I said, it's Google Analytics, and to define exactly what it is that we want to pull from Google Analytics, because there are really um, endless options in this case. So you can see once, um, once we've kind of defined that we're connecting to Google Analytics, what we have on the rest of the screen here is sort of like a form that we need to fill out, which has a few options and, and we'll go through them, uh, but there's really no coding or anything like that. So it's all very easy to configure and fill out. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is set up our connection. So just to show you um, quickly what that looks like, it's just signing in with your Google account, which uh, should have access to the specific Google Analytics um, environment or account that you're connecting to. Then we're defining the account and property that we're connecting to. In this case, of course, we're using our internal um, example for, for the demo. And really the more interesting part is down here where it says metrics and dimensions. Um, so this is where we're gonna define the specific the specific fields that we want to pull out of Google Analytics. So this is exactly how the, our data set is going to eventually look like. So you can see here for the metrics, I'm pulling um, users, new users, session, page views, and so on. And just if I click here, just to show you, um, you can see the long list of all the metrics that have, are available from Google Analytics. So if you're a bit familiar with um, with Google Analytics, these are all the metrics that are available uh, through their API. And you don't, you don't need to remember how to call uh, all of these different met metrics. They all kind of appear here in the dropdown. Same thing is true for the dimensions. So this will define the granularity of the data set that we're pulling. Um, and of course, this is all also customizable and you can define exactly the data set that you're gonna wanna pull. The next kind of main option that we're gonna need to uh, define here is the time period of data that we wanna pull the data for. So in this case, I'm pulling data um, from the beginning of the month, month to date. And that is kind of assuming that, you know, once we're finished with building this uh, river, we're gonna have it scheduled and running automatically on an ongoing basis. So I don't actually need to pull the entire history every, every single time that I'm running the river. 
So that's really it in terms of the first step. The second step is to define the target. Um, so as we said, we're, we're going to land the data in, in Snowflake in our cloud uh, platform. And this part is really easy. It's uh, just the only thing that we need to do here is to define the name of the database, the schema, and the table that we're going to load the data into. The last step here is the columns mapping, which is going to define the structure of the target table that is going to be created in Snowflake to land the data that we're, uh, that we're pulling out of Google Analytics. So the easiest way to do that is with this auto mapping um, option that I just clicked, which populates this list um, automatically based on the metrics and attributes that we selected in the first step here in the source. So you can see here, these are all the metrics and all the attributes that you saw in the previous screen. And this is going to be the structure of the target table in Snowflake. So that's really it. That's all it takes to um, define this, this river. Once we're happy with our results, of course, we can schedule it to run on an ongoing basis, whether that's going to be um, every few hours or a few times a day or whatever, uh, whatever the, the case may be. And just to give you um, an idea of what this would look like for other data sources. So if I go back to the first step here and click on back to data sources, this allows us to see the entire list of connectors and data sources that are available through Rivery. And I'll just kind of scroll down quickly so you can see um, how rich this library is. And for each of the data sources that you see here, they have um, a form that is uh, very similar to the one that we just walked through for Google Analytics. It just has, um, you know, the relevant options that are, that are uh, relevant for that specific data source. So that covers the first portion, the first uh, river that we, um, that we are going to talk about. And the second river that we're going to walk through today is this uh, river called a logic river. So you can see here that this, the type of river itself is a bit different. And this is what I referred to earlier when I mentioned that in River E, you can also customize um, and apply some advanced transformations and calculations to your data. So that is done with this logic river. And really what is happening here is um, a sequence of steps. So you can see here, um, I pre-made these three steps. And of course, this is fully customizable so I can add additional steps. I can have a few steps running in parallel um, or defining other dependencies. Each of the steps itself is a SQL statement. So um, just to give, uh, a quick peek here, this is an example of a SQL statement that is running here, which is pulling data from Snowflake, applying some, some SQL logic, like combining data from, uh, from a few tables or a few data sources, making some additional calculations, and then outputting the data back into Snowflake into a separate table. So that could be used for multiple things, um, like combining uh, you know, multiple marketing channels into a single output or doing some more advanced things like what I have here in the final, in the last step here is a, a, an attribution model uh, for a first touch. So really anything that can be done with SQL can be uh, orchestrated and executed with Rivery. So with that, um, I'm going to move over to Snowflake just to show you what uh, the different layers of the data look like here. So again, there's lots to say about Snowflake, um, but just to give a quick tour of what's going on here, on the left side here, we have the uh, list of databases and schemas and tables that are available in this dem demo environment. Um, and here on the right side, this is kind of like a worksheet where we can query the data and things like that. So for the database and the example that we're walking through today, um, you can see that our database has two main schemas. The first one is this ODS schema with these tables down here. 
and the second schema is data warehouse with these tables. So this kind of represents the two layers that I mentioned earlier. The ODS layer is used usually to land the data from all kinds of different data sources, pretty much as is. You can see here I have data coming from Facebook and Google Analytics and Instagram and Shopify. And of course, this could include many more data sources and many more tables. And the data warehouse uh, layer is a bit more structured and organized, and that's where we would potentially combine data from um, from multiple data sources, apply ad advanced calculations, and use this layer to visualize the data as you will see next in Tableau. And this is an example of what that data set would look like. So for example, if we query this table that was already created, you can see here the information is very organized and we're gonna use this data for our demo of Tableau. Um, so with that, I will hand it over to Eric. Awesome, thanks Mayan. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now. Hopefully everybody can see, uh, see the Tableau dashboard here. Um, so we, ha we have here just a, uh, a dashboard that gives us a high level overview of a marketing campaign and some order fulfillments um, for our data socks uh, client here. Um, and so I've, I've, I've uh, included this, uh, this, this nice little info button to give us the ability to, to see a nice easy breakdown of what each element on our dashboard is giving us. Um, so when analyzing our key metrics, um, we're able to use our funnel here uh, to show how users flow into our site and how many impressions we were able to convert into sales. Um, next, we're able to see uh, just a breakdown of exactly where uh, that web traffic is coming from. And then uh, below, we're, we, we, we move more towards like an order fulfillment section of the dashboard uh, where we're able to see uh, the, to, to, to have an analysis of uh, each order's progress uh, in the order fulfillment process here. So with, uh, so, th so th th there's, th there's a few uh, really fun features that I've used in Tableau to, uh, to, to in, in, in order to drill down to see uh, a bit more information, um, specifically revolving around our funnel here. Um, so this funnel, like really fun visualization over here, and um, I've, I've, I've added a couple things to it to make it even stand out even more. So the, the first thing here is, um, is, is, is a really good, really nice feature. Um, it's, called, it's called the Viz in Tooltip, um, which allows us to actually present a separate visualization um, in order, so, 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 so whenever we hover over a piece of the funnel, um, the, the visualization within that funnel will change a bit to show, uh, to show the, the and, 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 and this, this visualization within it shows um, the, 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 the metric that we're specifically looking at, so the section of the funnel, and it's showing the unique users, and it's, it's showing that over all time, uh, so all, all the time for our data source that we have here. Um, we can also, in, in addition to, to being able to put a visualization in the tooltip itself, um, we can also actually use the funnel uh, to be able to click and actually filter other visualizations on the page. So I can click this portion here in the funnel to see conversions and my source breakdown actually filters out everything besides conversions. So now we're seeing where all of our conversions are coming from, um, being able to easily see that most of our conversions are coming from our, uh, our, our search engines here. Then down below, um, we're, so we're, we're able to use our, our order fulfillments piece of the dashboard um, in order to see the distribution of our order statuses. Um, we, we, can, we can see all of our different uh, all of our different products. So we can see our snowflake socks, we can see our rivery socks and our Tableau socks. And uh, we can even click into each of these and see how the distribution of each of our order statuses lies. But one, one thing here that, that we don't have in this dashboard quite yet um, is you know, maybe, maybe with these 
with these created dashboard or the sorry the, the created orders here. Um, uh, we, so we, we have 19 out of a thousand total orders that are created. But what if what if a few of them are were created over like a month ago and they haven't been processed, they haven't been shipped out yet? Um, or what if what if out of the 33 shipped, a few of them were lost in delivery? And right now, there's no way to really get that sort of analysis. But we can we, we can actually go and step into Tableau and create a visualization that'll help us answer those sort of questions. So I'm gonna so so, so and, and everything I'm showing you right now is all on Tableau Desktop, which is um, which is where we're actually doing the bulk of the creation uh, within Tableau. So I'm I'm gonna open up a new worksheet. So each of our elements on a dashboard is an individual worksheet here, and. We, we see I have I have several data sets up here, the funnel data, sales data, and sessions data. I'm going to work with our sales data here. Um, and all of our all of our fields that comprise this data set are all listed out here uh, on the left hand side. Um, and, and, and they're broken down into uh, attributes or dimensions and then measures. So those the, the, those uh, fields that are going to get aggregated within the view. So if I wanted to see a breakdown of my orders over time and have those broken down by our different statuses so we can track what um, we can track our order statuses over time. Um, we we want to work with our order date time field, which I can I can very simply double click and and we bring our date uh, our, our order date time field into the visualization. So our, our columns and rows sort of act as like the X and Y axis here um, for our visualization. And one thing that's amazing with Tableau with dates is the, the Tableau with dates are very, very uh, dynamic. And there's a lot of ways that we can break down our dates. So we can see just the yearly value. We can see our broken down by month and by quarter. Um, we, so if, if I want to break this down by month, if I, for, for, for orders in this case, we probably want to track this more along the week level, so we we can we can track this per week, um, so that, so we we keep on top of our orders on a weekly basis. And then, if I want to see uh, if I want to see a count of our order IDs, right? I can take my order ID and along with double clicking to bring this into the view, I can also just click and drag and drop my order ID into the view. So Tableau, you know, has that nice, easy drag and drop functionality. Um, you can also double click and right clicking also gives us a lot of functionality. Um, so really easy to use, really easy to just sort of like hop in and just play around with all of your fields here. Um, and we notice as we're doing that, um, like the order ID right now, this is just sort of a list of all of our order IDs, which isn't exactly what I want. I want to, I want to see a, a count of this, a count of our order IDs. And Actually, if I right click on this order ID pill here, um, I can change it from being a dimension look to have this be an aggregated measure, which is where I can, I can find my count distinct of order IDs. And so now we have an ACC line chart just showing our order IDs for each week. And another thing that's, that's awesome about Tableau is we, we can come in here and change this. So like if, if we don't want it to, if we don't want our, our marks here to look to look like lines, we want them to be something else. There's a lot of different mark types that we can choose. Um, in this case, may, maybe I, instead of a line, I just want a nice easy bar so I can see my bars over time. Um, oh, the bars of my orders over time. And then um, I said before that we wanted to track, we want to track our order statuses over time. So we can actually take our order status and we can drop this on something like color in order to actually break this down and have these be more like stacked bars over time. And, and we can see all of our orders over all time and what the status is of those. So we notice like all, all the orders that are from a long time ago were either refunded or delivered, nice and easy, right? No, so nothing alarming there. And as we get closer to the current date, we're able to see, okay, we have some created that with some of the, some orders that were created on August 9th. Like maybe we want to look into those. We have some that were shipped the same the same week. Like maybe maybe we want to look into those. Maybe those have, should have gotten there. You know, it's middle of September by now. Um, and 
and and and and, the, and so there's there's a lot more that we can do with this this certain visualization here, um, in 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 um, in conjunction with our dashboard that we just made. And then just just um, a couple other like neat little features that we can we can do to sort of uh, just spruce this up a little bit is um, is is maybe maybe we want to like take our order statuses and we maybe we want to see these in, in a different order since right now they're just ordered alphabetically. Um, Tableau makes it really easy to just be able to drag and drop. We can take delivered. Let, let's say delivered. We we don't really care that much about delivered because uh, everything's delivered. Everything's okay. Um, but we, we, we really care about those that are created and those that are shipped because th those are ones that we can actually control. And so we, we want those to be at the top. We, we want those to be labeled at the top and then we want refunds to be after that and then delivery after that. So we can very easily just drag and drop and change the order of our statuses here. And along with that, um, you know, we, we, can, we can now take this, um, instead of calling it sheet 10, um, maybe we can call this just order statuses per week, something like this. Nice and easy title, um, and we can we can come in and bring this into actually our dashboard that we have as well. And I can take I can take my order statuses over the, over weeks. I can drag and drop, uh, and, and again, ju just like with with your. Um, with all of your fields on a sheet on the dashboard, we can take our sheets and just nice, easy drag and drop them right into a dashboard as well. And so here, you know, maybe maybe I, I want to make this a little bit smaller. Um, I can, you know, format the title to look like these as well. Um, you know, maybe maybe just make this and uh, make the font the same center it a little bit and then take the take the shading and add that same shading that we have for the rest of them and now our order statuses per week fit right into our dashboard alongside everything else that uh that we had created there um and along along with that just like just just we we were able to bring in the status um uh our status legend here, and maybe maybe here we can actually like edit the colors to go to so that they go a little bit better with the colors that are on the actual dashboard. So they're not just these not these like pretty pretty plain colors. Um, Tableau has a has a wide array of of um, uh, color palettes here, um, and it Tableau also gives us the option to actually customize uh, the colors that we work with as well. Um, one of one of my favorite features is that it actually allows you to pick a screen color. So if I really like this purple that I'm using up here, I can pick this purple and use this purple here. Um, and so 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 lots lots of different lots of different ways that we can we can come in customize these dashboards. Um, if I if I don't want to necessarily have this legend on, I can simply just remove it, have my dashboard fill up the rest of my screen, and now and now we have our dashboards with that additional visualization right in there. Um, and so with that, um, I think I will turn it back over to Sam. Awesome. Thanks for that, Eric. Um, so I think uh, hopefully that uh, that gave everyone some ideas, um, you know, really just to uh, to give kind of the, uh, the, the final bit here, um, just to sort of round out. Um, you know, uh, ho hopefully everyone can uh, can see my see my screen again. Um, some of the key takeaways that we have. Uh, yeah, firstly, um, yeah, we want to plan out our, our data analytics objectives. We want to focus on the business value and the quick wins. It's really important for us to really understand kind of where the business value is going to fit as we're going through and doing this so that we're building dashboards and visualizations and data models that are going to answer those business questions. Um, and we want to get some value quickly. So focus on the quick wins. Um, we want to uh, rank our, our data sources um, by ease and the value that they're bringing, um, because you know, each additional data source um, is a you know, an additional piece of work, and so we want to um, really you know, focus on the ones that are going to be most valuable to us in the organisation, and then you know, also those easy ones that we can bring in so that we can do uh, do some of those really cool visualisations with them. We want to 
plan how we're going to join our data together for attribution um, you know whether that means uh, having some sort of uh, promo code for our sort of more traditional means of, of, of media outlet um, you know or using uh, pixel tracking on our uh, our digital uh, media we want to be able to plan how to do that um, when we're doing these initiatives, um, you know, I always recommend ask for help. Uh, like I say, there's an amazing partner community out there um, and a community of customers who, who can really help. Um, you know, most of these questions, someone's probably done this before. And so um, you know, we can really help uh, as you go through and do that. Marketing in general, um, you know, always remember marketing is both an art and a science. Um, you know, we really want to be able to analyze our campaigns, um, but you know, coming up with demographics to market to and coming up with the campaign content itself um, you know, really is a, an art. And so you know, we want to do a lot of experimentation so that we can find which ones are working and which ones aren't and move really quickly on it. Um, and then don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, you know, this is a this is a data platform that um, you know is really quite simple to to be able to build out and, and put together. Um, yeah, you know, this is something that that many organisations are doing, and so we don't. You know, it's not worth trying to sort of build out these types of things from the ground up. Um, you know, uh, an out of the box solution and a combination of of tools like Rivery, uh, Snowflake, and Tableau make it really simple to be able to do this. Um, and then a you know, final piece of advice, you're never going to look cool in data socks, um, strongly don't recommend uh, buying them. So with that being said, um, we're going to jump on to the, the Q&A. We've got a few more minutes left here. Um, so firstly, uh, we did get, uh, did get a few questions coming in. Um, one, of our, one of our questions that we had from the panel was, um, what's the advantage of using this type of solution over and above um, you know, using uh, connecting cat Tableau directly to uh, Google Analytics or, or directly to um, you know, Facebook ads or, or something like that. Um, Mayan, do you want to do you want to maybe sort of take take that one to start with? Sure. Thanks, Sam. Um, so, I mean, that that is certainly an option um, and it's sometimes uh, a solution that we see. Um, but, you know, in terms of uh, the, the advantages of, of the, the solution that we presented today, um, having that flexibility, having that additional layer where you can land the data and transform it in a way that's more customizable is very powerful. So if you're working with, you know, a single data source, you know, like Google Analytics on its own, certainly it's very possible to just use um, Tableau directly uh, with that. But once you start to have two, three or more data sources and you want to be able to customize them and combine them um, and really uh, unlock some, some more advanced insights, it's going to be challenging and you're going um, to you're going to have so many more capabilities if you leverage uh, the other components that were mentioned today. Awesome. Um, got, a, got a few more questions coming in. Um, one more. So I saw uh, that Facebook and some other social platforms, uh, you know, sources inside Rivery. Um, what sort of details, what sort of information can Rivery bring into Snowflake from these other types of platforms? So uh, from Rivery and uh, from, sorry, from Facebook and other social platforms, um, there are mainly two types of information that Rivery can pull from, can, can pull. Uh, the first one is kind of ad related information. So if you have, you know, campaigns running on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, um, you can see activities of, 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 of those campaigns, like how they're performing, how many uh, impressions did you have? How many clicks did you have? Um, you know, and, and some additional uh, metrics related to that, um, as well as, you know, really all the information about the campaign itself and the creatives and all the dimensional information um, is also available through, uh, through Rivery. Um, and the second, uh, the second type of information that you can pull is also uh, just general kind of more public information. So if there's like a Facebook page and, you know, there there are some posts on it, even if they're not promoted posts, um, then um, you can still find information like the, the number of uh, comments or, or likes that that post um, 
received and things like that. So any any kind of public information for, for public Facebook page pages um, is also accessible and, and Facebook provides that functionality. Awesome. Um, so a few more questions coming in. Um, yeah, firstly, uh, yeah, I already have Tableau. Um, is Rivery and Snowflake, are they, are they additional products? Um, and if so, are they sort of uh, you know, paid for products? So I, c I can take this one. Um, yes, they, they are additional products. Um, yeah, they do both have their own uh, licensing. Um, the, the real advantage of, of bringing them in does, uh, as, as we sort of gone through today, is, is allowing to be able to do more, um, both kind of bring in more data sources and do kind of more advanced types of logic in the back end. There is certainly the ability for you to do that with, with other tools and then connect Tableau to it um, or connect Tableau directly to data sources. Um, but they really add that extra dimension in being able to do lots of the, lots of the kind of more of the logic, um, which is really valuable when you're looking at uh, some of these types of more advanced sort of questions of things like attribution um, and also you know, connecting up your campaigns with your stock data and, and, and various other aspects. And then uh, one more question. Um, can you share any tips for performance tuning using Snowflake and Tableau? Um, great question. Uh, Mayan, do you wanna take that first? Sure. Um... So in terms of performance tuning, uh, specifically when we're talking about the combination of Snowflake and Tableau, um, it would kind of depend on the use case, but typically uh, we would recommend using Tableau extracts um, that were mentioned earlier. So that allows you to extract uh, the data set that you're gonna visualize and work with in Tableau from the different da database tables that you have stored in Snowflake. And that way the performance in Tableau is going to be um, you know, ideal and, and work really well. Um, however, there is an option to have a live connection from Tableau to Snowflake, which is sometimes good for uh, you know, really huge data sets that are really you know, are gonna be difficult to kind of extract entirely into, into Tableau or sometimes it's for up from other considerations, like you want the data to be really real time and not, you know, and, and maybe an extract that runs every few minutes isn't, um, isn't live enough. So in that case, you would probably want to do some tuning of the data in Snowflake itself. Snowflake is very powerful and very capable in that sense. There are lots of things that you can do. One of them is that you can very easily scale the compute power that you have in Snowflake itself, um, and uh, as well as setting up the database tables in a very efficient way. So if you're familiar with other databases, like things like indexes and partitions, they have kind of the equivalent functionality in Snowflake as well, uh, which allows you to define certain partition keys and optimize the way that the table is structured and that the data is stored in the table itself. Um, would be happy to get more into that, but there's certainly a lot of options um, in Snowflake for performance tuning. Cool, and I think that is um, as most of the questions that we had for now. If anyone else has any other questions, I know we're now at time. Um, please do feel free to reach out to um, you know, both myself and, and, and the team here at Kiris, um, or your representative Tableau rep, and you know, reference the the webinar, and, and they can connect you to us as well. Um, and we can go from there and, and make sure that we get any other questions that you had answered. Um, equally, more than happy to set up individual uh, conversations. Um, to, to talk about your specific um, challenges and uh, some of the things that you're trying to do as well um, following this webinar. So thank you everyone for joining today and um, look forward to uh, speaking again on another webinar soon. Thanks.